Hi, welcome to the week one lecture for 8720 Psychology of Leadership. For um, the first lecture, I want to talk about leading virtual teams because this really seems uh, to be a problem. Uh, also, if you uh, our discussion question, uh, one of our discussion questions this week talks about the need to adjust for context and it lists virtual teams as one one of the contexts, and I certainly agree with that. Uh, Yahoo and IBM are uh, both recent examples. And it's uh, funny that both companies uh, ended their uh, remote worker programs and stated as a primary reason was their inability to foster innovation. Now, there were other problems too. Uh, for example, uh, Marissa Mayer at um, Yahoo uh, indicated that there was low morale with office workers because office workers um, thought that virtual workers were less productive and then they complained that the absence of workers who were working remotely uh, held up projects so th that was another problem. At IBM, um, IBM had 40 percent of its workforce uh, working uh, as uh, telecommuters or working remotely and they ended their program they mailed a letter out and told workers they had to report to the nearest office and it just seems to me there had to be a cost to that not only do they lose benefits of uh, of their uh, remote workers but i'm sure they lost uh, there had to be turnover involved with that because some of these workers were pretty good distance uh, from offices. Um, if you look at, according to Forbes here, if you look at uh, just the benefits to organizations, I'm not looking at the benefit to the workers and there's clearly there's benefits to both. Um, I primarily uh, work as a remote worker right now and, and I think there's uh, benefits to me to be in that role, but I want to focus on the benefit to organizations. And uh, right away, you see lower, lower costs and improved productivity. See, there should be improved productivity, not a decrease in productivity. Um, leaner and smarter teams, uh, higher number of part-time workers, which uh, um, could be attractive to some organizations based on what they're doing. Better alignment with employees, which that really ties into the productivity because they're saying if managed uh, effectively, the focus is on outcomes or performance. And so the performance of the employees is better aligned with the goals of the organization. Uh, there's less overhead because you don't need physical space for them. Um, increased cash flow and access to a larger uh, talent pool. And, and that's that's a big benefit right there. So these are some of the benefits, uh, which seem to me are um, worthwhile. In other words, something that organizations would want to stay involved in. Now, there are key leader behaviors needed in order to realize these benefits. And to start off with, uh, and I list this number one, every list I've seen online and in the research and from my experience starts with the, the need for clear performance expectations. That has to be identified. It has to be clear um, because outputs have to be managed. You can't manage time with someone you can't see or can't be around. So you have to manage their outputs and that has to be based on performance. Um, uh, meetings that are required, in other words, if there's meetings with other people and other people that are in a uh, physical office that need to be part of performance expectations. And I'll cover it more later, but technology requirements need to be part of expectations as well. Um, there also needs to be a team charter um, that states ground rules with consequences if they're not fulfilled. Um, and in my experience, I've, I've worked with online teams for 20 years. And 
in my experience, I can see a relationship between the quality of the charter and the team's performance. If the team has a really high quality charter, I can tell right away there, there's going to be a high performing team. And that normally in order to get the high quality charter, they also have a good leader that helped create that charter. So that charter is important. Um, the leader is also the primary connection to the organization for many of the remote workers. So the leader is in a key role here. The communications have to be detailed and they have to be frequent. And I really like what Forbes Coaches Council said about this. They said, the leader needs to treat remote workers as if they were local. And what they meant by that is, yet the leader has to make themselves easily available to the remote workers and use ch uh, frequent check-ins. And this, this tends to make a difference. Now, I want to talk about technology for a minute because we're at a state where technology has continued to evolve. The, the quality has continued to go higher while the cost goes lower. We can do high quality video conferencing for free today. So video conferencing is important. And not only that, it was mentioned in the Forbes Coaches Council. It's mentioned in most, once again, in most uh, um, best practice documents that you can find online and in the literature. Um, in my experience, video conferencing in real time is how you foster innovation. You can foster innovation with, through video conferencing in real time the same way you can as putting people in a room. There's, there's really very little difference. But it has, it has to be included as part of the expectations and it has to be coordinated and all remote workers need to have the technology to, to do it. And so technology becomes part of performance expectations. And now that may, may involve training. Uh, say, for example, if they're using GoToMeetings or Zoom or WebEx or whatever they're using, um, the remote workers need to know how to use the technology. So that could call for training. Um, the leader needs to trust their remote workers. <clears throat> you can't have authoritarian leadership with virtual workers and teams. It just doesn't work. It's not effective. So there needs to be a different type of leadership style and the people selected to work virtually or remotely, uh, there needs to be trust in, the, in that relationship. Uh, I want to emphasize uh, virtual teams need training the same as office teams. Face-to-face uh, -face in, a, in a classroom is ideal because it allows them to form relationships that are going to last through time and they can really build uh, from that experience. If that's not possible because of distance, you know, some remote workers are international, then video conferencing in real time for the training is the next best alternative. Um, I also would add to this list that the leaders need to be trained on how to manage uh, the remote workers. Uh, you can't just expect a leader to know how to manage remote workers and because what they're going to end up doing is doing the same thing they do with office workers, which does not work. They ha there has to be adjustments made in order to be effective in managing uh, the office workers. So um, in my experience, uh, the performance and productivity of virtual workers um, is a function of effective leadership and it's something that can be achieved. An organization simply needs to, to make the investment to do that. You know, one other point I do want to make while we're at it. Um, um, in Roger's book, Diffusion of Innovation, he talks about the importance of uh, employees being able um, to see the results of an innovation. So if we're using virtual workers or virtual teams and they're remote, then the workers that are in the office 
they need to know that the remote workers, the virtual workers, are just as productive, or at least know their level of productivity. In other words, that's something that has to be communicated. Otherwise, the office workers are going to assume that the remote workers are slacking off because they're not in the office. And so that's, once again, that's a function of effective leadership uh, to manage that dynamic so that low morale doesn't uh, uh, get created in either group. So um, in summary, um, managing um, uh, virtual teams and virtual workers is a function of leadership and it can be done and it can be done effectively. Thanks.